Hey guys, welcome back to another fully optimized piece of hardware. I'm your host Cleaver Meats, the host of a butcher shop here in Hawaii. Let's get started. Today I'll be reviewing the Elgato Stream Deck. Yes, I actually have the product that I'm reviewing in my hands for once. It's a very cool little device by Elgato. It does what the name says and quite a bit more. It's a deck for streaming, but it has tons of use even if you're not a streamer. I actually find myself using it quite a bit more for non-streaming uses than for streaming. So hopefully that gets you guys to stay to the end of the video. But seriously though, it's useful even if you're not a streamer. But speaking of which, I stream a few days a week at twitch.tv slash WeWereBeats. Make sure to go follow me there. I'll link it down in the description. You're creating quality content backed by the best tech on the planet, but you want to do more. With Stream Deck, unleash your creative genius and make waves across Twitch and YouTube, all while focusing on what matters most, your audience. It has 15 LCD keys poised to launch unlimited actions, eliminate the need to map and memorize keyboard shortcuts. One touch tactile operation lets you switch scenes, launch media, adjust audio and more, while visual feedback confirms every command. Traditionally this level of control was exclusive to mainstream broadcasters, but now it's available at your fingertips. Works with Elgato, OBS, Twitch, Twitter, Tippy, XSplit, YouTube, Mixer, pretty much anything. Alright, so now I'm going to explain to you guys how I've made use of it. So I've set it up to work with various programs. It switches profiles on certain programs when they open. Uh, you can set it up to do that whether or not you want to for each program and each profile. Very customizable. That's the one thing I love about it so far. For instance, I have a profile that it switches to whenever I open up Adobe Premiere. And it has all my hotkeys laid out. Not like the basic ones like um, L or whatever. Like it'll be like weird ones like control shift L and stuff like that. Just things that I wouldn't normally be pressing but I do use often. And one great thing is you can label the stream deck however you want. There's, these are programs right here. We can go back if we want. You can mute your microphone. Unmute it. You can make folders with more things in them. So it's basically never ending. I can switch my audio inputs and outputs from here. I don't have to fiddle with my window settings anymore. I can do it all from here. I can control my stream, control my videos. I control websites, applications, literally everything. I knew I was gonna want this thing, but I didn't know I would like it this much. I like it quite a bit more than I thought I would. Oh, look at that, it even tells me what percentage of my CPU is being used. So here's some things I did in my Premiere Stream Deck profile. All right, so here you can see my Adobe Premiere profile. I have a button to open up After Effects and Photoshop. Just, um, just some things I would need in the program. I have a button here to open up the whole sequence from Premiere and Adobe Audition. So I can quickly mix my whole project just by pressing this one button. It's very quick. I can also edit just a clip here in Audition. So say I have problems with just a single clip. I can take just that clip in Audition after I select it. And as you can see, there's some folders here with effects, audio, color grading utilities and whatnot. You can basically make it so it does whatever you want because you can bind the hotkeys to do whatever you want in Premiere and then you can bind whatever hotkey to whatever button and then put whatever image you want on it, including a GIF. As you can see, this cool little GIF here. This is uh, this is from a profile I found online. I modified it a bit, but uh, it had some really cool images in it. That was the one thing I really loved about it. Now, obviously, you can set this up for any program you want. I plan to set up uh, some profiles for Adobe Photoshop as well as Ableton. The cool thing about this product is it can get deeper and deeper the more you want to build it. So if I want to build my profiles more and I want to make myself more efficient, I can do that. Only spend 23 hours a day filling with my stream deck. The software that comes with it is pretty easy to use. It installs easily. It does its job well. It doesn't crash or anything. I've had any issues with that. I would say they made it as intuitive and straightforward as possible, just like the stream deck itself. I highly recommend this for content creators of any type, not just streamers. I found myself using it more so for efficiency purposes with other programs actually. If you're not sure about getting this though and you want to try it out, I suggest getting a Stream Deck app for your phone. So for iPhone, they have the official Stream Deck app for your phone and for Android, they have one called Touch Portal. I used Touch Portal for a few months before purchasing the Stream Deck. That way I was kind of sure that this was something I was looking for. The apps are free or uh, very cheap to upgrade. It's definitely worth checking those out. I'll link all this down in the description. You guys may ask, if they have an app for your phone, why would I get the Stream Deck? Well, there's some noticeable upgrades. First off, the images and GIFs look way nicer. 
as well as the program seems a bit more customizable. You can do more with the Stream Deck hardware than you can with the app. One of the biggest differences I noticed though is you can tell when something's engaged and not engaged on the actual hardware. So if I mute my microphone on a stream, I can tell easily from the Stream Deck. On the phone app, it's a little bit harder to set up. So I found myself um, not being able to tell what was engaged and not engaged as far as the Stream Deck app. So it worked a lot better for me with the hardware. So I recommend the hardware, but if you want to try it out first, try one of the apps first. Definitely a great way to get introduced to the world of stream decking. And I probably wouldn't have bought my stream deck if it wasn't for these apps. So let me know, I just wanted a better version of this. All right, so how could it improve out of price? Wait, what? So how could it improve? Uh, not in many ways, really. I think the price could come down a little bit. I got it for $100 at Black Friday, but I think it's about $150 at the moment. I think $125 would be like a nice sweet spot. But yeah, I got a really sweet deal. I'm extremely satisfied out of 10, and I give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, one of the biggest issues, though, is that it requires Windows 10, which uh, shouldn't be an issue. We're going into the year 2020 here. I would hope you have Windows 10. But if you don't have Windows 10, there should still be a free official upgrade out there from Microsoft. I'll try to find that link that down in the description, uh, as well as the affiliate link to buy a Stream Deck if you guys are interested. Uh, that's a great way to support the channel while getting a Stream Deck with no extra added cost to your cart. Yeah, it's a great way to support the channel. Make sure you check out my Discord if you haven't, and my Patreon. Uh, we have uh, great conversations there, as well as lots of perks on my Patreon. Tune in next time when I fly away.